Um, my name is Kevin James. Um, I am five foot six, five five and three quarters. If you want to get really technical, um, I weigh currently 198.2 pounds. Uh, this is third week out of NPC Nationals Miami. Um, the last show I did was Illinois State National uh, Illinois State Championships, which is at the Copernicus Center in Chicago, Illinois where I took not only, uh, I won my class, but I won the overall, and then I also won the most muscular Mike Matarazzo Award. Um, it was pretty, it's a pretty exciting moment for me, actually. That was when I, I knew that this is really, you know, this is the route I need to be going in my life. Even Chuck Sandow, the NPC chairman, he didn't really know who I was because I remained behind the scenes for the most part. And I, I kind of like that, I like being unknown uh, he came up to me, he's like, where have you been? And why have you not been competing more? He's like, you need to keep going for real. He's like, you have a, you have a future in this sport if you really want it. Yeah. And, you know, I smiled, shook his hand, I said, Chuck, thank you very much. And that's exactly the plan. That's the goal. This is, you know, it's been a dream of mine since I was six years old, seven years old. Chuck's a really good guy, too. He is. He is. Um, he's cool. So today, tell us, uh, you kind of did like an overall workout, like a depletion thing. Mm -hmm. We're going to be doing a photo shoot here, so you didn't do like a full workout. But um, go ahead and talk about each movement you did, bud. Uh, what you remember and what you like about each movement. <sighs> Whenever I choose movements, it, yeah, I kind of jumped around a little bit. But generally, when I choose movements, movements simplicity is key. Um, I found with myself and then with also the clients that I train, the simpler the movement, the better it is for the body. You try to do too many things at one point in time, it's like multitasking. Say you're a college student, you have four papers you need to write, and you try to write all four at one time. Are you gonna write each one as good as you can at the same time as if you could, if you just did it separately? Probably not. So simplicity is key. The movements, um, I emphasize parts of my body that I feel are lagging, whether it be upper chest, uh, rhomboids if you want to say rhomboids are a weak point on me um uh rear delts uh hamstrings uh like rdls for example i, I like romanian deadlifts st stiff-legged deadlifts over conventional because i can feel way more of a stretch i can engage my core a lot better um that hip hinge movement is it feels incredible if done properly and engaging my core has been a problem area for me as well as most people actually with most exercises and um, engaging the core with the RDLs are pretty pretty easy and helps me with every other exercise. Uh, as far as shoulder work goes, I usually use dumbbells for almost everything. Every once in a while, I'll switch it up with cables. Again, simplicity is key. Uh, overhead press, front raises, lateral raises, rear delt flies. That's it. That's all I really need to do. You, you don't have like a set workout, then you kind of go by how you feel about what you want to do, or do you have like Monday I'm going to do these movements and like? Both, I would say, actually. I, I don't have set movements that I do religiously. What I do is I have body parts that I feel I need to work on, parts of those body parts that need more work than others, and I choose exercises based off of the part of the muscle group that needs work the most. Okay. So. Like, for example, this prep leading into nationals, I took it easy on back and arms. I laid off that a lot. I put a lot more emphasis on my, my delts and my hamstrings. I felt like they were lagging. And I wanted to create that, that balanced overall look. I didn't want to have one body part sticking out that was, okay, this guy's got huge arms, but you know, he's, he's, he's lagging glutes or he's got a massive chest, but he's got no lats. I didn't want that to be the case for myself. so. Uh, my workouts are dictated but by what I feel I'm lagging at the time. Okay. You seem to be pretty well, well rounded. I mean, I don't see anything. You don't have anything. It's like this guy has no problems. I mean, everything looks pretty even. That's been the goal of mine. Um, I've always seen bodybuilders that have something that stands out. I don't want to have something that stands out. I want everything to stand out. I want I want to set the standard. I want to, I want to not only physically but mentally and Personality-wise and uh, culture, I'm trying to do big things with bodybuilding. I'm starting with myself and leading by example. Oh, that's very cool. uh, 
go ahead and talk a little bit, we're talking off camera, but about your diet and that yours is different, what works for you and how you like it out there as opposed to the <laughs> traditional or standard. Traditional standards, you have your, you know, four to six meals a day, you got your plain jasmine rice, your chicken breast, whatever greens, sweet potatoes, and you kind of cycle back through in tilapia. Um, I did do that for a while. I did it at first. I got bored of it quick. I did it. I saw results. Wasn't a fan. It took the, it took the enjoyment out of it. it. took the fun out of the aspect of bodybuilding, why I'm doing this. So I switched it up. I don't actually have a set meal plan anymore. I have macros that I, I have to hit. Um, I have food sources that I know are healthy that I choose from. Uh, Fast digesting carbs, slow digesting carbs, different protein sources. Here's one that blows people's mind. I don't eat chicken. I, I just don't eat chicken anymore. Uh, I prefer a ground turkey. Ground turkey, um, lean beef, goat, bison, antelope. Uh, those are my primary meat sources, eggs, egg whites. So what was the reason with the chicken? I just didn't agree with you, or you just didn't feel like it was for you? I just stopped liking it, honestly. I did things to make this sport more enjoyable for myself. And by doing so, people would say that, yeah, if you're going to be eating these different food sources outside of just your, your strict, plain, basic oats, that you're not going to achieve the results that you can. Not true at all. Uh, I have instant artificially flavored Quaker oats a couple times a week. I have Kodiak cakes the week of the show. I don't do cardio, period. I, I just don't do cardio. I don't like it. I did enough of it when I was in the Army. I'm not doing it again <laughs> unless I absolutely have to. Um, and that's kind of my philosophy on dieting and needing to do cardio is if it just because this works for me doesn't mean it's going to work for everybody. And I know that. And I'm not telling everybody to do this and it's going to work. And what I'm saying is this works for me. And I couldn't be happier that I'm doing it in this fashion. Um, just about figuring out what your body likes, what your body doesn't like, and working with your body. Me, my body loves carbs. It loves sugar. It does not like fat. I'll keep my fats lower, but I'll have sugary items here and there. It's not not typical for me to hit 100 to 130 grams of sugar a day most people would think that that's just horrible by daily sta average standards it is but it's not affecting me negatively in any way shape or form and i and i enjoy it <laughs> i enjoy my pop tart after i get done working out um and i, I the meal plan itself i don't even have a set number of meals you know, every time I ingest food, that's a meal. Whether it be one shake, whether it be, you know, I have four shakes and then three actual meals of real food. That's seven meals right there. Sometimes I'll have seven, sometimes I'll have three. But the goal for me, at least, is always three meals. Now, being a personal trainer, running my own business, um, my schedule changes like that. So I don't always have the luxury of being able to eat at a certain time every day of the week. It just doesn't work like that for me. So, adapt and overcome. My method of adapting and overcoming was doing what I'm doing now. Just kind of piecing it together, choosing nutritious, healthy options, making sure I hit the right amount of macros, uh, and then that's it. As far as the not doing cardio aspect, I work out fast and hard and rigorous. Sometimes I'll do two a days, two or three times a week. And sometimes I'll even do a three day once or twice a week. I work out with myself. I work out with my clients. It just, this is what works for me and I'm enjoying every second of it. It's, it's awesome, honestly, I love it. Go ahead and tell us a little bit about uh, how you got interested in bodybuilding, bud, and then how you transitioned into the military and then how that helped you as you came out of the military. It's actually a fun story for me to tell. Uh, how I got into bodybuilding is go to the grocery store. And it, some people don't remember grocery stores having massive magazine aisles like they used to. They still do, I guess. But now, uh, going back when I was six years old, I remember going to 
it was called Butera at the time, or Eagle, and then Jewel Osco. Um, my parents would be grocery shopping, and I would, run, I would run off doing my own thing. And I would go straight to the magazine aisle, and I would look at, you know, muscular development, uh, muscle and fitness, Flex magazine, all the bodybuilding magazines. And I would see these, these monsters of men, these just Olympians, literally Olympians. I didn't know they were Olympians at the time, but I would see them, and I would just be in, in awe. I was like, you know what, that, that's something... That's something special right there. That's something that you don't see. You, you really don't see it, and not everybody can do. And I was just in such awe that I, I, I that's what I knew I wanted to do. I would, every single time we go to the grocery store, I go look at the magazines. My first weight bench was actually when I was in third grade. I think that's when you're like nine or ten years old. I don't even know the brand. It could have been Little Tykes for all I know, but it was... It was plastic. They weren't even metal plates. They were plastic plates that you filled with either sand or water. And di depending on if you filled with sand or water, that dictated the weight. And you know, I remember in third grade putting a weight, weight bench in the middle of my room. I'd have my bed, the weight bench, my dresser, and then a mirror. And I'd be benching in the middle of my room. I'd get up, look in the, look in the mirror, and imagine a pump. If a third grader can get a pump, I don't know. <laughs> but uh, that's, that's how I started really getting interested in it and then what really kind of pushed the envelope was you know my my dad bringing me into the gym when i was in eighth grade getting ready for high school it's like you're gonna play varsity ball and we got we gotta get you bigger he football football um i played football from six until graduating high school and uh you know that first time in the weight room when i first felt the that 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 sweet pain the the blood just being forced into your muscles, your veins popping out, that fatigue, the endorphin release in your brain. It was like a drug. It was, it just, it was, an, it was a great feeling. It didn't hurt anybody. It didn't hurt anything. And it only helped literally every aspect of my life. I walked out of there feeling better. See, I was pissed off that day. I was, I was sad, something. Whatever mentality I had, whatever mindset I had walking into the gym, it was shifted by the time I walked out when I got done working out. And that was the real, the real hook, line, and sinker was the feeling that I got when I got out of here. I was doing something physical and I was accomplishing my dreams at the same time. It doesn't get any better than that to me. Uh, the physicality progressed into the military. Straight out of high school, I joined active duty, Army with the 101st Airborne. Um, I have a deployment to Afghanistan. Uh, and that's what, that's what really brought out how tough I know I can be. That's a whole different experience that you don't know how you're going to react, you don't know what you're going to do, you don't know how you're going to respond until you're faced with that type of situation. Where your life is literally on the line, you got bullets flying at you, you hear snaps, you hear zings, you hear people screaming, you see smoke, fire. Uh, that changes a person and what that did to me is it took a small spark and they created a nuclear explosion essentially because now i was able to i was able to use another energy source one thing i found out when i was in the army was in those situations i don't cower i don't get scared and I'm not saying this sound like a badass. This is just like a kind of reality of it. it. I got angry. I got, I literally got angry. I was shaking. I remember the first time we took contact. Uh, I didn't get scared at all. I got immediately, it was, it was one of the, the strongest rages I've ever felt. But I channeled it into doing what I needed, doing what I needed to do as an infantryman with the 101st Airborne. The Rockasons specifically. Um, that allowed me to channel anger and take emotions that are inside of me, bring it to the gym, utilize it in a healthy fashion, and again, progress towards my goals. So it's, all, it's like everything kind of worked out perfectly. It was like the perfect storm putting everything together that led me to this path, which I believe is my destiny. This is what I'm meant to do with my life. It's a, it's a weird, strong feeling. 
and it's uh, it's 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 been a ride, and I can't wait to see where you know where it goes from here. So how old are you now? I'm 30 now. I'll be 31 in 12 days. Okay. Wow. So November 14th. I got a lot of time, but I. I have, and I recognize this, and I'm thankful for it, uh, because without the the life experience that I have, I would not be able to do what I can today. I would not have the same mindset that I have today. Drive, purpose, motivation, logic, reasoning, uh, communication skills, leadership quality. Um, I, I, everything happens for a reason, and it's up to you to choose what you do with that situation. You either learn from it, or you can cave. It's something I tell all my military buddies when they have issues. You got two choices. You're gonna live and you're gonna die. Which one's it gonna be? Do you want to die? I don't think so. So do what you got to do and live. It's that easy. So. It depends on the unit and where you're at and what part of the country. So yes and no. Sometimes you can, sometimes you can't. When I was in Afghanistan, um, our AO, which is Area of Operations, it changed halfway through deployment. Deployment is one year long. So for the first six months, we were in a spot that was relatively built up and established. They had uh, they had port johns for, for example, like it wasn't too different from being outside the United States at like a rest stop. You know, it's just massive with airstrips. Now, when we switched AOs, went to a different place. We were the first American troops there, so we had to build our base from the ground up. That was different. There's no time to lift weights, so, but I, I still did. You know what I did was I took tent poles and I fashioned sandbags at the end of each tent pole and I would do workouts like that. I would put the bar on my back, I would do calf raises off a platform, I would do squats with it, and I would bench press. I did whatever the hell I could do to lift weights because not, not only was it a goal of mine, but it's also therapy. You feel better, you just feel better. And lifting has been my, my uh, weightlifting, bodybuilding, fitness. It's kind of been my, my north star my entire life. It's been the one thing that's been a constant. It's always been there for me, and it's always helped me out of whatever situation I've been in for the better. Well, like you said, there's only negative aspects. The main part is always makes you feel better and you're achieving your goal with one. True. The only negative aspect would be if somebody doesn't understand the lifestyle. Yeah. But... They don't have to. Yeah. yeah. Nobody has to understand. A, a good enough friend or something, they should be able to understand where you're coming from or, or realize you can't go binge drink or, you know, something like that. You would think. Um, <laughs> I've run into both. Some people understand, some people don't. And it's, it's okay if somebody doesn't understand. I don't get upset. I don't understand certain things about some people. I'm not getting upset about it. Yeah. Everybody's their own person. Do what makes you happy. If, the, if you don't understand this, it doesn't make you happy, doesn't serve you, something else will. Go find it. Yeah. Uh, anyone you'd like to thank, bud? Friends, coaches, or anyone? I know you don't uh, mainline your own, but. I kind of, I've done a lot on my own, and I don't want to not give credit to other people, but it's, this really kind of has been a one-man show. My, um, I started this when I was young. When I was in high school, I started doing research. You I remember. You were not like genetically out of high, like in high school. It's not like you were some huge rip guy. You no. Know? Yeah, you were. Oh, yeah. Here's a great example. My freshman year of high school, I weighed 117 pounds. Yeah. Okay. Freshman year of high school, 117 pounds. Yeah. Sophomore year, I weighed 130. I was not a big guy at all. And now here I am, 5'6, roughly 200 pounds. That goes to show how long this takes. Thing. It was not, very not, very much not. Um, started when I was 14, I'm 30, 31 now. So what was that, 16, 17 years? Yeah. Takes a long time. Yeah. Three weeks out now? Three weeks out. Oh, there is somebody I would like to thank who's been my second pair of eyes uh, through the last show and this show. Um, really kept my mind in check. He knows when to back off, when to push me. Uh, and again, I, I couldn't have, I don't think I could do it without him. My second pair of eyes is Cameron Mitchell. Um, he's another trainer who works out of Quad's gym with me. Uh, me and him have very similar styles of training. 
Um, not necessarily diet, because I kind of I kind of piece my own diet together, and he doesn't necessarily agree with me not doing cardio. But <laughs> well, I don't like cardio, and I I would rather work out three times a day than do cardio. And until it becomes a detriment to myself, I'm going to keep doing it. Has your family always been pretty supportive of Brother Bud? With the as much as they can. They they don't quite understand it, but they like that it makes me happy. And that's enough for me. Yeah. They don't have to understand it. I know it's a different lifestyle altogether. It's not, it's a subculture. It's a very small, specific one that's growing, but it's still a subculture as it is. They are supportive. I love them for it. What it means more to me is that they are supportive of me and my happiness, even though they don't necessarily like the fact that I am bodybuilding. They would probably prefer me to be working in some big giant office somewhere with a 401k and pension or something like that. But um, they show their happiness and support when when it's when it's needed. So they're there for me. Well, good luck in the show. I hope you kill it. And, uh, I hope so too. Yeah, well, well.